All right, hi everyone. So I'm Simon Lacoe-Julien, and this is joint work with Martin Yegi. And so I'm going to talk about um, uh, modern analysis of uh, the uh, uh, Frank-Wolf algorithm with away steps, um, in particular in, in the case of strongly convex objectives, where you get linear convergence. So for those who were at the talk of, um, of, of FERD this morning, uh, this will actually give more uh, information on, on those results that he mentioned. So yeah, so this is um, a standard Frank-Wolf algorithm. So it's known to converge very slowly when the solution is at the, at the boundary of the polytope. And, and the reason it is because, um, uh, because the standard Frank-Wolf algorithm takes steps which are towards the corners uh, when the solution is at the boundary, as it gets close to the solution, it will start to zigzag. In particular, like the, the direction in which Frank Wolf will go will, will uh, make an inner product of almost zero with the uh, gradient. And that's why you get sublinear convergence rate. And, and so uh, Wolf in 1970 proposed a modification, which was um, uh, the away steps, um, which add other type of, 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 of direction that you can look into. In particular, you can um, you can move away from the corners in the active set. Okay, so if you, <laughs> so this away step uh, basically moves from uh, one from the worst corner in the current expansion of your of your iterate, uh, and in particular in this case it would converge very quickly, and um, and uh, yeah, and, 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 and it will have linear convergence for a strongly convex objective. So if we can. I'll, I'll be the clicker with Martin. <laughs> All right, so what are the known convergence results? So as, uh, as Fred mentioned, so if F is strongly convex, uh, there is this um, result by Gela and Marcotte. Actually, perhaps I'll just click myself because that will be kind of like. So um, yeah, so the so Frank Wolf algorithm will converge linearly only if the solution is in the interior of the domain, and in particular, the constant of convergence will depend on the distance between the solution and the boundary. And so um, this is kind of annoying because this constant could be arbitrarily close to zero. Um, and now, if you look at the the Frank Wolf with the way steps, uh, it w it you won't have to have that the solution uh, lies on the interior of the domain. Um, Though the analysis that Gela and Marcotte presented kind of reused the, the result from standard Frank Wolf. And so what happens is um, you will get that the, the constant in the rate of convergence will depend on the distance between the solution and the boundary in the optimal phase. Okay? So what happens is basically the away steps help you to identify the optimal phase. And once you're in the optimal phase, you just do standard Frank Wolf, and then you get the standard linear convergence rate. But the problem is again is that this this constant could be arbitrary to small to arbitrarily close to zero. In particular, if your solution is at the corner, this analysis would tell you that there is no linear convergence rate. And so, um, so that's one of the problems. So the constant could be arbitrarily close to zero. So it's not really a true linear convergence result. And the other one is that you actually cannot really compute this constant because it depends on the unknown x star. And another problem with this current analysis is that it's not uh, affine invariant. So what do I mean by affine invariant? So the Frank-Wolf algorithm is invariant when you change uh, the, the domain by affine transformation. So if you run Frank-Wolf in the transform domain, you will get the exact same iterates uh, as in the original domain. So you would like your constant to uh, uh, not depend on those transformation. And so uh, that's basically our contribution is we actually give um, an affine variant analysis. Also, uh, uh, we give it as a global linear convergence rate, which was not the case in Gela and Marcotte, because they had this like two phase where you first identify the optimal phase and then you have some rate. Whereas now we can already have the, the, the linear convergence rate right from the, from the start. And we know that the constant is bounded away from zero. So the result looked like this. Um, we have that the, the primal uh, error will go um, at an uh, exponential decaying rate with a constant uh, rho, uh, which is basically the ratio of two quantities. So uh, there's the curvature constant, which was in the standard Frank-Wolf uh, case. And there's this new constant that we define, which we call the geometric strong convexity constant, which is kind of related to uh, both the uh, geometry of the set as well as the strong convexity of the function. OK, so just to get a sense of, of, of those, of those uh, constants, which both of those constants are fine invariant. Uh, um, and I won't go into the definition, I think, but you can come to my poster to see the, the, the exact definition of the constant. But so to get a sense of those constants, if f has L Lipschitz gradient, then you can bound uh, CF. You can bound CF by the Lipschitz constant times the diameter of your domain, square. 
and if um, also f has mu strong convexity, then uh, you will have a lower bound on the, this geometric strong convexity, which is, so it's very similar and analog. So you have strong convexity and then the pyramidal width of the diameter. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, a, a notion of width, but a, a, a bit more different because of the away step. So what, what is this width? So here's a, a, a domain. The width is basically um, the minimum directional width on your domain. So the directional width is basically the, 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 the the extent of your domain in a specific direction. You look over all possible directions, you find the one which minimizes that, and it gives you the, the, some kind of width. And the permital width is some modification of that that I can explain to you at the poster if you're in interested. And so if you compare the width to the diameter, and this, this ratio in some sense kind of characterize, uh, in some sense, a condition number of your, of your set. So interestingly, um, we can interpret this, this, the inverse of the linear convergence rate as the product of the uh, condition number of f. So that's standard uh, quantity that you would have if you would look, for example, at the convergence rate of gradient descent. But also we have this geometric quantity, which depends on the constraint and not of the function, which is the eccentricity of d, basically. So, so if you have a very narrow set, you have very high eccentricity. In, in analog, it's kind of similar to when you have a um, um, uh, high condition number where you have those big uh, ellipsoid ellipse as your uh, level set. Uh, and to give you two examples of standard sets, so uh, how it's scaled with dimension d. So for the probability simplex, the eccentricity will scale as square root of d. And so that gives an overall rate of, for example, the complexity of your algorithm then becomes d log 1 over epsilon to reach error epsilon. So you, we don't beat the lower bound of uh, which scale with d, uh, which makes sense. Um, and then for the cube, you actually have uh, order d eccentricity, so you, then you get to get a d square complexity for the algorithm. So to summarize, um, we provide the first, we could call truly globi global uh, linear convergence rate for a Frank Wolf type algorithm, which doesn't need to compute any constant. So I mentioned this, uh, what do I mean by needs to compute any constant? Because there's this recent result by uh, Garber and Hazan, 2013, where they have a, a, an interesting algorithm which, which uh, reduced their coordinates multiple times until some criteria, criterion is satisfied, but for, to, to have this criterion, you need to compute a bunch of constants, which you only have in practice. Whereas this algorithm is just standard Frank Wolf with a way step with line search, or you can minimize the quadratic upper bound. Uh, and, and then you will get this global uh, linear convergence rate. And the analysis is a fine invariant. And um, we can bound this constant with a condition number and a purely geometric quantity called uh, eccentricity. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, so one consequence, uh, it, it, for example, is it's, it sounds like the simplex is one of the best uh, uh, domain for the Frank Wolf algorithm because, uh, so there's this paper which mentioned that the, 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 the biggest width you can get for a, 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 a simplex inscribed in a circle is, is obtained by the regular uh, simplex. And so I have the intuition in some sense that the, the, the smallest eccentricity domain is actually the, the, the probability simplex. And from this analysis, that's actually, from the bound, it, it, it kind of like, it gives you that it's, it's best. So, um, so that's one thing. So perhaps maybe simp make your domain as simplex as possible. Mm -hmm. um, then the other kind of results you could get is it, it gives you um, a lower, like, be, like, I think one of the, there was a question at the beginning about, okay, What's the point of using Frank Wolf uh, when the solution is in the interior? Because you could just do gradient. I think one of the points is actually you get a sparse expression of your iterate as a sparse combination of your, of your, of your polytope, which sometimes is very useful in, in practical applications. And so with those kind of results, you can also get upper bound on the number of atoms you need to actually get a, um, yes. a, a epsilon error. Yeah, so because actually the bound is not 1 over k, it's, it's min of, of d and uh, uh, 1 over k, I think. So, um, and so 
here what we have is d log 1 over epsilon. So we are not beating the 1 over k uh, uh, when, uh, these, when you're not hitting the dimensionality. Uh, because actually, also our rate is not just log over an epsilon. We could do the same thing as the other result that people presented before. Is we, we'd, we could also look at the best case between 1 over k, uh, well, or uh, 1 over epsilon and log of 1 over epsilon. Um, but there's a, this d constant in front of our, of our algorithm for the case of the probability simplex, which I think is actually the, the, the smallest you could get, uh, doesn't beat the, the lower bound. Okay, so, so in general, before we sort of see this exponential convergence, we're going to need to have to do a number of iterations that are over its multiple dimensions? Yeah. Okay. So, 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 but I could also try and answer your question, which is, so this is under, under two very strong Uh, no. no, 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 because here it's Frank Wolf with the way steps, and so uh, so the constant is basically you just need to to have that that uh, actually I, I have it here, <laughs> so this quantity here that's that's the definition of the strong geometric uh, uh, the, the geometric strong convexity constant, and so as long as this is fine as this is greater than zero then you get linear convergence rate. So uh, so some conditions you need, for example, is you have to have a finite number. Uh, of of of, um, of faces faces or corners to, for your polytope, because uh, otherwise you could get this arbitrary close to zero. So it doesn't work for work uh, curved domain, unfortunately. So that's one thing. Uh, the the other thing though is you don't even need strong convexity. So you could have degenerate directions. You could have non-unique solution, and this could still be greater than zero, which is kind of a. So we have a weaker condition than previous uh, conditions, which were before. In particular, the Robinson's condition, which I haven't mentioned here, but was which was also mentioned before, uh, required a unique uh, optimum. Whereas here we don't. Uh, so basically, this is kind of like a, it's still not that tight, even as a quantity, but it's still much looser, uh, much uh, weaker than most conditions before. So. Under special cases, you can try to bound it in different way than we did with the um, with this um, pyramidal width that I mentioned. So above that dependency on d, uh, you said it's a dependency because it's active, right? Yeah. Well. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the question, the question is, uh, um, D here appears to be as a multiplicative uh, factor, and there's recent uh, result for stochastic um, uh, coordinate uh, methods, which give it as an additive factor. Uh, that's a very good point, and in particular, um, so we also have work on the block coordinate Frank Wolf version, and perhaps, indeed, if we have a block structure, we could reuse this kind of analysis and then get the same linear convergence rate. But now, perhaps with, because of this block structure, we'd be able to have an additive factor. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, that's still open. Yeah, so, okay, so, so shy, shy comment is that um, I mentioned that uh, we can get upper bound on the, uh, on the number of atoms needed to express our solution. Uh, but he says, well, uh, given that I have a D uh, in, my, in, my, in my rate and that in dimension D you can always express your solution as a, as a combination of D factor, uh, that's a bit like a moot point. Um, yeah, I think I, I will think more about it because also the thing is we... Uh, yeah, I mean, so is, can you f always find this expression though very easily? It's just like solving ten, like d times the linear oracle, basically. Yeah. So it gives you the algorithm. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so that's a good point. So, so Martin mentioned that the, the, the constant could be smaller than d, especially because the, 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 the d term is when we 
try to have a geometrical interpretation for this constant, which is actually uh, could be much tighter. In particular, this constant look at the variation of your function. So it's basically how your function, uh, the linear approximation of your function, uh, uh, departs from your true function, but in always looking at respect to the gradient. So there's a lot of direction, for example, if your gradient is zero, which don't matter, but which if when you look at the geometric constant could really kill you. And so you could have a smart constant.